All right, hello and welcome. In this webinar today, we're gonna to talk about everything you need to know about student life and what it's like living in Stockholm, Sweden as a student at KTH. So we'll take you from the very beginning and the preparations to begin your journey here, as well as what the opportunities are like when you get here, culminating in what it's like to be in our position and what your opportunities and career plans can be after your time at KTH. So to kick off the introductions, I can start by introducing myself. I'm Claire, I'm from the US originally. I study here in the master's program for sustainable urban planning and design. And yeah, I chose to study Sweden because I was drawn by the example of urban planning and was just really interested in living abroad and Sweden was the right fit for me. But I know we all have a different story, so. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Chirag and I'm from India. Uh, I study my master's in sustainable energy engineering. For me, finding the right program uh, to study my master's in was key and KTH helped me see that. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Zhi Xian and I come from Summer. My program is Environmental Engineering and Sustainable Infrastructure. And I choose KDH also because I really like the content of my program. I'm very interested in sustainability and this program is a good mixture of you know, technical and social studies. So yeah, here I am. And then our fourth host today couldn't be with us ultimately because he ended up being sick, but his name's Oscar and we're still going to share some anecdotes from his experience here. He is Swedish, he's in the first year of his master's studies in naval architecture, and yeah, he has some good tips that you'll hear about later on. So, moving to Sweden, if you're anything like we were, we'll take a bit of preparation. Um, so, maybe we can give you guys some tips about what helped us best get prepared for just the logistics of making the move and what that was like. Yeah, for me there were a lot of things to prepare before I came, because I need to figure out my resident permit situation. So the first thing I did after the excitement of my <laughs> admitment, and so I gathered all the documents and applied for the resident visa like immediately because I heard it's gonna take a long time before I get it then I decided on the type of housing I want to live in then I applied for that and apart from the practic practical stuff I also bought something that I, f I thought it's gonna be difficult to find here like some really nice Chinese tea <laughs> I believe you have similar stories. Yeah, I mean, apart from the paperwork, which I guess everyone has to do, uh, I would also recommend that uh, getting things from your home country, a few things such as for me, getting a pressure cooker was kind of important because I know I cook a lot of rice and vegetables inside it. And I would recommend get things which you are probably unsure of that you will get it here in Sweden. So in that way, but pack light so that you don't, have, you don't have to pay extra excess baggage fee like a few of my friends ha unfortunately had to do at the airport. So yeah, that's there. Yeah, B bring everything you need but pack light. Um, I also packed pretty light. I moved here with just a suitcase and a backpack and um, I also timed my arrival so that I would get here for the KTH arrival days which is something we can definitely recommend. KTH always hosts a few scheduled in August each year and what they do is they just streamline the arrival process so they give you your documents and your keys and they also have a lot of uh, kind of new student activities and organizations there so it's, there's a lot of hype on campus um, but in addition to that if you're living in KTH accommodation you will also have like your bedding and your pillow provided so it's nice if you can time it that way you can really make the transition here pretty seamless so once you get here you're also going to be living somewhere and there's a lot of different types of accommodation available to students uh, at KTH in Stockholm that ranges from studio apartments to shared flats to corridor living and we all have different experiences uh, living in different types of accommodation it's great because all, s all tuition fee paying students are guaranteed an offer as long as you apply for during the month of May so I did that myself and I was given an offer in Technikringen, which is one of the student accommodations on KTH campus. And so I live in a shared flat, which I, I like because it's sort of the middle option. So for me, I 
am in a shared flat with two other girls. We share a kitchen and a bathroom and common area, but I have my own space, which is great because you can have that bit of privacy, but also have a bit of social time and we have a really great connection. So it's a setup that has worked for me and it's also the middle option in price. So I can really like recommend it in that way as well. And my tip would be that when you live with, you know, one to two other people in the shared flats, I think it's really important to be very considerate of your flatmates and also be really strong on communication because otherwise I think conflicts can arise, but I'm really grateful because I have awesome roommates. So it's worked out really well for me, but I know you have a totally different situation. Yeah, I have been living in a corridor room since I came here two years ago, basically. And corridor room means that I have my own room and my shower and bathroom, like all to myself. And I share the kitchen and the small living room with 11 other neighbors. I think living in the corridor room is also like a really good way of meeting new people because mm. you will have neighbors from different schools and they study different things and they also come from all over the world. So you will have really nice conversations at your breakfast or at your dinner. <laughs> you talk about, I don't know, everything basically. And yeah, living in a corridor also means you need to take care of the common area because it's important that to make sure your neighbor can also use the equipment clean yeah. and nice. And yes, yeah, so I've been, I have became friends with some of my corridor mates and we sometimes have dinner or have a small party in the corridor from time to time. And yeah, we would hang out too, like a few months ago, there's a Northern Line in Stockholm and we just run out to see it, like, really excited. Yeah. I, I remember everyone being on the Lapis Beach, uh, like, I think the entire Lapis was there at the beach to look at the Northern Lights, so exactly. that was really nice. Yeah. It was super fun. Yeah, a lot of the, like, shared corridor livings, uh, living accommodations are also, like, very large, so yeah. Yeah. it ends up being a very social environment. Definitely. But yeah, so um, if you want to learn more about different types of accommodation, KTH has done a webinar detailing even more about like studios as well. So you can check that out. It's recorded on the KTH YouTube channel. So we also, outside of our accommodation, have met a lot of people through our different involvements in student life activities here. Um, and one of the biggest ways to do that is through the student union. So at KTH, it's called THS and there's so many different types of organizations that you can be part of. Um, I know you've in a bunch. Yeah, uh, I've been part of two uh, organizations within THS. The first one is called THS Armada, which is uh, Scandinavia's largest career fair. And it happens every November here at KTH. And yeah, so, uh, so being part of uh, Armada actually helped me a lot in making a few more friends and getting contacts at a few more companies. And it, it's actually really fun. So that's, that's a great experience. Uh, and the second one was uh, Flavors. It is uh, an, an Indian association uh, where we promote culture within THS again. So it's the same uh, with more fun. <laughs> I've also, so you're into like the kind of career and culture side, but I've been in more of the sports side, I think, of uh, what THS has to offer. There's so many different organizations. For example, I participate for the swim club once a week and go on trips with the KTH Outdoor Club. But there's, I mean, things for rowing, things for like football. It just depends what you are interested in. There's probably something. So I think that's a really great way to get to know people because uh, no matter what like language people are speaking, sports are kind of universal. Um, but also I think it's cool here is that you can, if there's not a formal organization at THS, you can either propose to start one, which is really great, or informally there's always a lot of things going on. So for example, I in the winter had friends who were also interested in hockey and so we would go to the nearby ice rink and just text a group chat to meet up and then you leave it as an open link and it spreads so I think that's a really cool way as well um, uh, and yeah it, it was the same for me so I I know how to ice skate so there's like a whatsapp group for just for ice skating where people just uh, text during the winters that you know this rink is open during this time let's go for uh, for, for skating for a while yeah so 
and those group chats are, are cool too because they'll exist for like the KTH campus areas and, and things yeah, as and well. So almost can, everyone is on it. <laughs> yeah, which is really great. So of course we have a lot of fun in our free time doing different types of activities with different organizations, but obviously you're going to meet a lot of people through your master's program and build friendships and have experiences that way. So maybe I can explain a little bit about how master's programs here are different or how studies here, your courses, what life is like on campus uh, is because it is unique, I think, to what we've all experienced. Um, so master's programs at KTH are two years. For the first three semesters, you're doing coursework of various kinds. And then for the final semester, it's I think common across all master's programs that you have a degree project. So like uh, the degree projects for a start can be done also with different companies. KTH has great connections to industry, which I think is really cool. It comes in both in your coursework, but also in your opportunities to do your degree project, which can ultimately lead to you know career opportunities. But also uh, on the day to day, what sets KTH apart is that you have a very kind of informal and personal approach to your education. So classes and seminars, there's a lot of smaller groups, small class sizes, and then your uh, relationship with professors is really informal so you address them by their first name which that's like someone corrected me when I first sent an email like professor this <laughs> they're like you can you can call me Ulrika and you're like okay <laughs> so it is different that there's kind of this even equal playing field in academia and in your educational environment so I really like that as well but also KTH is a big proponent of like innovation and entrepreneurship and so there's a lot of different resources on campus to support that like the KTH innovation or the student business incubator called Student Inc. And so if you have ideas this is a really great place to be able to take them and have support to develop them while you're here. Um, and yeah that's another kind of unique aspect. But also uh, one semester at KTH has two periods within it and so sometimes uh, you will have maybe one course that runs across the whole two periods but other times and more commonly I think you have a mixture of classes so you might have you know two in P1 and two in P2 so like it's it changes I think throughout the programs and depending on what you study um, but yeah I think also kind of the last thing KTH has um, extensive infrastructure for research so lots of state-of-the-art environments laboratories and things like that so I think if that's a need for you and your future projects KTH definitely has it um, so yeah and one thing we talked about this a lot with Oscar was that this informal relationship is very normal to him as a Swede I was super shocked by that but you guys have noticed different kind of differences or contrast to your studies I know as well. Yeah, the first thing is definitely addressing professor by the first name. Mm. That scared me a bit. Can, can I really do that? <laughs> but yeah, in the end I got used to it too. Other than that, I think the biggest difference for me is the difference between master and bachelor's study. Because in my bachelor's I did a lot of like theoretical stuff and also hard math and so on. Mm. But in my master's, my courses, are, they are all very pra practical. So we would learn some theory like in the, in the morning, then in the afternoon we have workshops for the same course. Then we apply what we just learned like, immediately. And you learn so much better this way and also you kind of know what what you can come up yourself like what you can do with this theory and also I think I have a lot more group work here for every single course I have at least one group project which is very different from what I was used to in China we like really do group project yeah but here it's really fun because you get to work with people from you know different parts of the world and maybe they have different academic backgrounds then this type of conversation and collaboration can make you learn a lot not only academically but also you know in other aspects of life 
Yeah, I think so too. And for my masters, also we have a lot of group work, but like collaboration with different people from different disciplines. And I think yeah. it's a really good way to prepare for your career Definitely. because you're not going to work with commonly all people doing and the same thing or the same specialty. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, one of the big differences uh, was, as you mentioned earlier, that you know, ref referring your, one of your professors by their first name. Uh, but you get used to it in time, so it's okay. And yeah, along with that, uh, one more kind of a minor difference would be the campus is not a separate part of uh, the city or so, it's within the city. So that's something new to look at. Uh, along with that, you could virtually study any, in any campus building you want to. So that's also a plus point. Mm -hmm. Let's say I like this building. So I'm just going to sit there and study the rest of my day in that way. For me, my favorite is this library, which is really nice. And yeah, that's that's uh, good to know about uh, KTH here. Yeah, and then of course, I mean, being at a university in Sweden, you hear a lot of Swedish all over, but most Swedes speak very, very good very English. So English, yeah. the master studies being all in English, that's your main language, but it's it is fun, like popping around campus to the cafes and experiencing still like you know be like you're in Sweden because yeah, yeah. I, I would say learning Swedish if you start learning Swedish from now it would be definitely a plus it will yeah. help you yeah. in that way yeah. so you feel less like a tourist more like a student yeah, yeah. and it's definitely better for for connecting but yeah. yes so outside of studies outside of our free time all of us actually have part-time jobs which is not unusual for students to have while studying but it's definitely not the main way that we cover our living expenses for example like it covers a bit of rent or yeah. a bit of groceries kind of a thing but it's a little fun as well um, so for me my part-time job is actually through KTH I'm one of the digital student ambassadors so I write for the student blog but I also help out with things like this, uh, webinars and such. So I'm just one of the digital ambassadors, but uh, there's also a team of student ambassadors who are specialized to support incoming students and the admissions process. So there's kind of those options that you can apply to for a nice close to home part-time job. Um, but yeah, typically you can apply for that like near the end of your first studies because it helps to have that familiarity. I know so is also on the digital student ambassador team and and that helped a lot for us but um, yeah I don't know yeah I, I used to work in a cafe for some time not it was not long because it takes it does take some time from my you know study time and daily routine and so on but it, it was really fun because I personally I really like baking and making desserts and making drinks so working in a cafe is perfect because I get to you know learn some stuff from the cafe and mm. also have some left over take home and so on so yeah like to give you an idea about 10 hours per week of work maybe can cover my rent mm, but also that depends on where you work and what type of housing you live in just an estimation yeah definitely and then Oscar was actually great for sharing with us about his experience as a student assistant so he was a student course assistant and um, those types of positions are usually just giving support to a professor for instructing seminars or grading and it's and yeah your depends on your background and what you're specialized in but those jobs are usually posted on KTH's website and like the ambassador jobs it's nice to have something that's close to home and yeah, he really was very fond of, of that role. Yeah, he really enjoyed it. I think. Yeah, he liked giving back to students who suffered through calculus Absolutely. as he had. So yeah. <laughs> it was very cool. So having a side job is, I think, beneficial. It's also led to me meeting you guys and other people. Um, but I don't think that, as we've said, it can cover everything. But if you choose not to have a job, that's also fine. Because if you're a little savvy as a student, I think you can have no problem really thriving here and it's something that we write about on the student blog a lot so cost of living but how to maximize your fund while on student budget finding student discounts these types of things so you guys can check it out sometime if you haven't seen it already so around town we also do a lot of different things because Stockholm is an incredible city to live in um, there's nature there's the city it's really well connected uh, but maybe we can tell a little more about 
yeah, what you like to do around here. Stockholm definitely has a lot to offer. Whatever you like, there's always something for you. And personally for me, I think the winter here is a bit harsh. I'm more used to like warmer climate. So in the winter, I always stay indoors as much as possible. Mm. So I would do, you know, either climbing to get some sports and exercise, or I would go to the uh, museums and galleries around town. I have a picture of me climbing the spider girl <laughs> to the left, as you can see. Uh, then in the winter, like, I think one of the best things you can see Northern Light sometimes. Stockholm is a bit south for Northern Light, but this year we got super lucky. Yeah, we saw amazing. Northern Light a few times actually. And the picture to the right top is the picture from where I live, basically five minutes walk from where I live. And that was when I just mentioned we went to see Northern Light with my neighbors and so on. And the bottom right picture is in the autumn, you can go mushroom picking. It's super fun. Like you can spend one afternoon in the forest and you see different type of mushrooms. You try to distinguish between them. Be careful not to pick the poisonous one, of course. And yeah, it was super delicious in the end. I've never done that, but I'm really envious. Try <laughs> <laughs> so the next time. Yeah, honestly. Join me. Um, but yeah, I don't know what you yeah. do around here. Uh, I, I, see, I like uh, photography, so for me, uh, Stockholm offers uh, different types of uh, kind of pictures, uh, landscapes uh, during uh, various seasons. So if you can see in the presentation, I, uh, there are four pictures representing each of the four seasons, starting from spring, summer, autumn, and then winter. And yeah, it's, it's a very gradual change, but it's fun to have a look at. And along with that, uh, I would say if you if you haven't started learning how to cook, it's better late than never. Mm. So, <laughs> because uh, I mean, it's good to have food outside every day, but then you'll go bankrupt. So yeah. And so don't get tempted by all the nice restaurants and stuff. Yeah, and because I there are. I do like touring of the city to yeah. try different cuisine. Different cuisine, it's different super international cafes, food. and a lot of places to have a day trip close by, like Uppsala or Sigtuna and so on. Yeah, that's true as well. I, like for my time when I'm in the city, love checking out the nature and probably all the things you photograph. Um, mm -hmm. But I have my favorite cafes and this type of thing, but I also appreciate how much there is so close to the city because there's already a lot of nature integrated but you don't have to go far to be like out in the archipelago and so actually these pictures are from a barbecue I did with some friends recently we went out towards Vaxholm and just took the ferry oh, it was super beautiful, beautiful and I don't know it's just nice to be able to check out on a Sunday and do that as a student but also during uh, previous times in the pandemic when there was more restricted travel we also were able to travel within Sweden and take trains we went up north got to explore Swedish Lapland and it was an amazing experience as well so I really appreciate that like whether you're going far or sticking around the city it's super accessible by public transportation and I mean the city itself is great by bike so it's I think it's an incredible place to live it has a small town kind of feel but still has like city city vibe there's a lot yeah. going on so we can't say enough good things. <laughs> but yeah, so now we don't have as much time to do a lot of fun things because all of us are currently working on our thesis. Oscar is not, he's a first year master's student, so he is probably still enjoying himself on sailboats in the archipelago <laughs> in his free time. But we, yeah, have kind of a different lifestyle now than most students during the first three semesters. Mm -hmm. What's your kind of thesis experience like to give people an idea? Um, so, for me, I have started off my thesis in March. It's with KTH and Scania. And uh, it's, uh, it's good. I found the, it's a paid thesis. So, I found this uh, opportunity on Scania's website and applied for it, gave an interview and then got in. And after that, uh, yeah, it, it's, been, it's been great. Uh, both my supervisors at KTH and at Scania are very helpful. And if I have any doubts or any questions regarding what I'm working about, they're very open for me to ask anything about uh, that to them. So that's something which is really nice. Yeah, I also had a really nice experience with professors and so on. I chose to do my thesis with uh, one of my professors at KDH. And the topic she 
uh, kind of gave me in one of the lectures he had was socio-hydrology. And I thought it's really interesting, so I wanted to do my thesis on that topic as well. Mm -hmm. So she helped me formulate my topic and my, you know, my task and where I should go with the thesis. Then she also put me in contact with another professor in Amsterdam, I think. And yeah, so he was also helping me building my models and explain my results and so on. They've been super supportive. I was really grateful of them. Yeah, it's awesome because either you're doing your thesis degree project with um, like a company, in which case you have your KTH advisor and a advisor through your company uh, or organization, company, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you have kind of two, or you're at KTH having like a really local and close, I think, relationship there. I have a similar thing where I'm uh, doing my master's thesis with a partner under a full-time researcher at KTH in mobility policy. So it's been also a really positive experience to, to be here. But yeah, so once we're done with our theses, we will move on. And I know we've all kind of been starting to set up our career plans. Um, just maybe to give listeners an idea, after graduation, some quick statistics, around 40% of students have a job even before they graduate. Um, if you don't, one of the options for students like us is to apply for a special residence permit where you can have uh, one year to continue pursuing work in Sweden. So that's a really great opportunity if you're too busy during your degree project to have you know, full capacity to apply yeah. for jobs. Um, but obviously a great way to lead to a first job is through your degree project. And over 500 degree projects are posted on the KTH portal by a variety of companies every year. And over 20% of students usually get their first job through that experience because it is sort of an internship experience as well. So a great way to connect. And then for people who are more interested in innovation and entrepreneurship, as we've mentioned, can still receive support from KTH Innovation to help launch those ideas after graduating too. So when you're done, you become one of like 80,000 KTH alumni. And that's a really cool network I've found already because when you're applying for jobs, if you look up a company on LinkedIn, usually there's like one KTH graduate who works there at least. And so it's a great way to start networking. Um, in that way, but yeah, I think it's a good springboard into other opportunities. But I know for me, I'm planning to continue my career here in Sweden. So I've been learning Swedish, I've been applying to jobs here, and I'm applying for that residence permit. But yeah, what are you guys going to do? Same for me. I, I want to get a job after I finish my thesis. And also I want to stay in Stockholm for a, a few years at least. I think it's a really beautiful city and I like it so much here. So right now I'm learning Swedish and searching for a job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's the same for me. I hope uh, that even I get a job somewhere in Sweden. And I mean, I don't want to leave Stockholm because it's, I don't know, it's super beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> But at the same time, I don't mind shifting uh, to some other country within, within the EU. So I also wish to pursue my career here. Yeah. So that really brings us to the end of like the journey of coming to KTH. So from what you need to prepare to arrive here to all the things that are going on while you're a student here to what your opportunities might be or just hearing about, you know, what we're doing now that we're in that kind of next transitional phase of life. Hopefully this has been helpful. Um, the next webinars that we have coming up are on June 7th and that's more specific information about the arrival and introduction process. So those like KTH arrival days that I've mentioned previously. Um, and before we move into the online live chat, we can take two questions that we've had submitted to us previously. So. One of those is someone who was wanting to hear about available sports activities for students. What can we do during our time at KTH? So uh, to participate in any of the THS sports organizations, you become a THS member. It's like an annual fee of 356 crowns or something. It's like 35 euros. And with that, you can join any KTH club. Some of them have maybe a small fee. Like I joined the swim team. It's like. 100 crowns, 10 euros, um, but the other available sports include everything from rowing to soccer to, I mean, 
like there's I know we know people in the like there's many so there's I think basketball as well but you can go on the KTH website uh, go to KTH THS and you can find all sorts of uh, organizations there but the next question we had was about PhD studies a lot of maybe, students are wondering maybe I could take that one because I have I had also looked into PhD applications and so on. So PhD in Sweden is more like a full-time employment. So that means you work for the school for four years. So you would apply to the position as how you would apply for a job, basically. And it's going to be posted on KTH vacancies a few times per year. And yeah, I would say if you have in mind which, which field you want to look into, keep an eye on that website. Also. A guy I knew that he got his PhD position through one of his professors that he had a lecture with together, and so he liked his research, uh, you know, field and directions. So the professor pointed him to one available positions. So he applied. Then now he's doing the PhD with this professor he liked. Mm -hmm. So I think once you are a student here, it's nice that you can reach out to the professors and talk to them, and maybe you find something new. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. So yeah, we will take any of your further questions in the live chat. So if you uh, check the link in the chat of this webinar, it will be available there. But also if you navigate to KTH's new at KTH page, there's like a pink button that says chat with us and we will be behind the scenes live uh, for you to ask us all of your most pressing questions. But with that, we owe you a thank you for listening and we hope it's been helpful. And yeah, good luck. And yeah. hey, do, right. bye. Hey, do, bye. <laughs>